This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Life Coach Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 146, Being Imperfect. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach, yoga teacher, and soon-to-be mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you too can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Well, hello there, and welcome on in today. If you're listening in real time along with me, this is Christmas week. <laughs> so I'm hoping that today's episode is going to be helpful not only for this week, but also for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, and also for all the things that we do throughout the year, all the events, all of the celebrations, all of the day-to-day small minutia and details all of the big stuff, all of the everyday stuff, all of the special stuff. This is one that's kind of for everything. So today we're going to talk about being imperfect. And although I'm guessing that maybe your eye was drawn to that word imperfect in the title of this episode, I'm actually more interested in the word being this time around. That's where we're going to be focusing our energy. That's where we're going to put our attention in this conversation. Because if you really identify with the whole perfectionism thing, then I'm guessing you've read articles, you've listened to podcasts, and generally consumed so much information about perfectionism and how to break out of that cycle and why it doesn't work, right? Yada, yada, yada. And listen, that's helpful. We all need to learn and to educate and to inform ourselves, that's an absolutely necessary step. But I'll tell you what, all the information in the world doesn't change anything in your life. Have you noticed this? Like for instance, you could read a book about snow skiing, right? You could watch a whole bunch of YouTube videos, you could get the gear, You could follow Olympic skiers on Instagram and learn all the things about snow skiing. But until you go skiing, you don't change anything in your life, right? You have to try it and feel it and integrate it into your actual for real life in order to shift your relationship to skiing. You with me? Like learning is helpful and I'm guessing you're going to want to read up on skiing. And watch some how-to YouTube videos before you hit the slopes. But if you don't ever ski, then you're a person who knows about skiing, but not a person who skis. So, same with pretty much all the stuff we talk about around here. Right? You can know a lot about anxiety. In fact, I'm going to guess that most of you don't need to learn anything else about anxiety. You've lived it. (laughs) you've experienced it. You could write the books on anxiety at this point, right? No more learning about anxiety. It's not what you need to fill your mind with. It's time to focus on what you want instead. If you want to feel calm, learn about that. If you want to feel steady, find out what generates a sense of steadiness for you. Fill your mind and your headspace with that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm kind of digressing here, but that's an important point. So many people email me or have a consult call with me, and they start out by telling me how much they know about anxiety. And I'm like, why? (laughs) Stop it. Don't learn anything else about anxiety. That's not where we're going. We want to learn and practice what you want for yourself, not more of what you don't want. Same with perfectionism. Let's not keep beating the perfectionism drum. You've tried that. You know how that goes, right? Today, we're going to talk about being imperfect, but not so much the imperfect part. I want to really hone in on the being part. 
And hey, folks, lucky for us, the holidays are pretty much upon us. So we're all going to have some time to practice, (laughs) right? All right. So what does being imperfect look like? So I remember just last week, my yoga teacher, Janet Stone, she said in class, she said, please wobble. That's the best part. It means you're human. So we were doing some standing pose. It required a lot of balance. And of course, inevitably, people were falling over. People were getting wobbly. And her comment really struck me. Please wobble. That's the best part. She was calling attention to that to say, yes, you're doing it. Right? Yoga for me has been the source of many analogies like this. It's like this practice sandbox where you get to move through poses and try a whole bunch of wacky stuff, some that require strength, others flexibility, others balance, others surrender, sometimes effort, sometimes it requires all of that. And the practice of yoga, it's not about achieving a pose. It's not about putting your foot behind your head, right, or standing on your hands or anything remotely like that. It's the union of yourself with yourself. It's the coming home, the uniting of your mind, your body, and your breath. And you know what? That requires a lot of wobbling, a lot of imperfection. I've also heard yoga described as the practice of dealing with the consequences of being yourself. (laughs) And yeah, that's pretty much it. How me can I be? right? With all the quirks and the ego and this tight hamstring and that wide open shoulder and this story about this practice, can I deal with the consequences of being myself right here, right now on this mat? It's a big ask. All right, enough yoga. But that's maybe helpful to some of you. (laughs) What about making mistakes, though, since we're talking about being imperfect? What about the being of making mistakes? Because this is a biggie. Messing it up, doing things wrong, dropping the ball, failing in some way. Our fear of this, our anticipation of mistakes, this lack of perfection is such a hang up for so many of us at work, with our kids, in our homes, with our friends and extended family, during the holidays, how we look, how we show up, how we act, what we say, all of it. It's like our lives are riddled with potential mistake minefields. And the perfectionists among us are so exhausted by pouring their energy and their efforts towards the best, greatest, most ideal outcome. And my friend, I want to slow mistakes and failure way down and get much more specific about it. Ask yourself, what's the big deal about making a mistake? Like, so what if you fail with this project? Right? So what if you don't do this well? Just sit with that for a moment. Right? What comes to you? Because I have a guess. You ready? My hunch is that if you really play this out, if you keep asking yourself questions like, so what? And why? And what am I making this mean? You'll eventually boil things down in any situation to a feeling that you don't want to feel. Like if you make a mistake, if something doesn't pan out, you'll feel embarrassed rejected, humiliated, sad, lonely, excluded, something along those lines. So my guess is that the big deal about making mistakes is feeling how it feels to have made a mistake. It's not the mistake that's a big deal. Because really, look around, right? Most mistakes are incredibly small in the big scheme of things, right? They're easily fixable. They're figure outable, whatever. It's getting through the emotion that accompanies the mistake that's the real bugger. So here's the thing. 
when you realize that it's not the mistake, but the feeling that accompanies the mistake, then you have a different set of work ahead of you. Yeah? It's not that you have to be perfect and avoid making mistakes because that's not the problem. No, the problem is that you maybe haven't strengthened your ability to feel. Like consider what if you could feel anything? What if you knew that no matter what, no matter how pleasant or unpleasant an emotion was, you could feel it and get through it, that you could absolutely handle it? Then what? Freedom. (laughs) That's what. And this is a huge shift in the practice of your life. If you're not practicing perfectionism, right? Maybe that's what you've been trying to practice. And instead you start practicing feeling. See, like now you're playing a whole different ballgame. What we're doing, we're practicing. And what we're practicing, we're getting better at. So if so far you've been practicing perfectionism, you're only getting better at believing you need to be perfect. You're only strengthening that mental story and that idea. But if instead you started practicing feeling, then you'd be getting better at creating freedom for yourself. You'd be laying track that points in a direct line towards liberation. Because knowing that you can feel anything is one of the most freeing things out there. I promise you this. Spend some time with this idea. Just see how this feels. See if that resonates with you. See if feelings are the real block, not the mistake. All right. All right. Also, in this pursuit of being imperfect is the practice of acceptance. So quick reminder about acceptance, but like the most important reminder about acceptance Acceptance does not mean you like it. I think many of us think that in order to accept something, we have to like want it and like it, right? You don't have to fall in love with something in order to accept it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to condone it in any way. Like, for instance, we've all gotten a crash course in acceptance with this pandemic. None of us like COVID right? I haven't found a person yet who was remotely okay (laughs) with this whole pandemic thing. But when we accept that it's here, we can operate from the reality of what is. We say, okay, this is happening. Now what? What do I do? How do I stay safe? How do I keep my family safe? What do I not do? right? We can only ask those questions from a place of acceptance. Another example, and this is an important one. (laughs) How about accepting someone's behavior? Like think of the most difficult person or family member you're going to be dealing with in the next couple of weeks. Let's just know exactly who they are and be totally unsurprised by how they do the things they do. You know what to expect from your uncle or your sister-in-law or your boss. You know who they are. And as they say, when people show you who they are, believe them. So you know exactly who and what you're dealing with. You know your uncle is going to say something inappropriate over Christmas dinner. Or that your sister-in-law is going to get tipsy by noon. Or that your boss is going to call at like 4 p.m. on December 23rd with that one last thing before the holidays. You know this is how it's going to happen. You can accept those people for who they are. You don't have to like it, but you can accept it. Because what's the upside of arguing with the reality of them being themselves? What good is it to wish that things were going differently? All that happens with that is you feel terrible. So from a place of acceptance, you can take care of yourself. You can know what to expect and you can protect yourself by putting boundaries in place, maybe by steering clear of certain conversations, 
Maybe you proactively ask the boss for any last requests before you shut things down for the week. From acceptance, we can do all of this. So what does this have to do with being imperfect? We give up all hope of perfection is what? We give up all hope of perfection from ourselves and from other people. So this is from our internal world, right? Our own thoughts and feelings and actions and from the external world and everything that all of the other people are doing and saying and however lifey life is going to get. There is no perfection. We are a living experiment in being imperfect. All of us. You're imperfect. I'm imperfect. They're imperfect. All of us are. When we accept that reality, because you know it, right? You know it in your mind, but maybe you are living as if that's not quite true, (laughs) right? Maybe you're still holding on to the idea that perfect is out there, that you're going to unlock that level next and it's all going to work out. It's not happening. I don't know if you've noticed. We always say things like, well, maybe over winter break or when the holidays are over, or when this pandemic finally ends, right? Maybe when the kids are home, maybe when the kids are gone, (laughs) maybe when it's summer, maybe when I get that promotion, maybe if I get married, maybe if I get divorced, right? It's like, then things will be great. That day isn't coming. It's going to be as imperfect then as it is now. It may be different imperfect, but also like kind of the same. So can we accept that? Can we know that's exactly how it's going to go and say, okay, I see reality for what it is. Because again, that's a lot of freedom on the other side of acceptance. We move directly into the line of reality when we can see what is and let it be. Why argue? No one in the history of the world has ever changed another person or the politics or the pandemics or the weather or the world by arguing with the reality of what is. We never will. Accept that. It's imperfect. Now, what are you going to do within the imperfect container we're all operating within? That's a powerful question right there, my friend. So we talked about being wobbly. Maybe it's wobbling through yoga. That's one way to be imperfect. Literally and metaphorically speaking, wobbling through things that are new or that feel a little weird or things that you've maybe done a million times that today, for whatever reason, just don't quite gel, just isn't quite as smooth. That's one way to be imperfect. Another is by making mistakes. But more than making the mistakes, right, is being willing to feel the feelings that you're trying not to feel if you do make a mistake. Yeah? Opening yourself up to the practice of feeling. Remembering, you are an emotion generator. The emotions are simply there to be felt. There's nothing ultimately right or wrong, good or bad, about how we feel. They're just there. Emotions energy in motion, vibrations through your body. The capacity to feel is a direct line to freedom and to being perfectly imperfect. Yeah? And then lastly is acceptance. Drop the idea of perfection. It isn't coming for us. Not ever. It's always going to be exactly this imperfect. Even when the pandemic is over, Even when the kids are home, even when the kids move out, even if your partner starts picking up their socks, even if your boss calms down, it'll still be totally imperfect. Operate from there with that knowledge and understanding, with that acceptance. It just feels so, so much better. So much more freeing. All right. My friend, that's it for today. If you're listening to this now, 
like when this is coming out, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, a happy Kwanzaa, a great holiday weekend. Maybe this weekend is simply a break from routine and life as you currently know it. So whatever this weekend is for you, whether it's happy and merry, whether it's sad and difficult, I just want you to know you're not alone. I see you. I hear you. I feel you. I'm going to be back next week with you. We're going to be talking next week. Actually, we're going to be talking about setting goals because New Year's, right? But we're going to be talking about what goes underneath those goals, right? What holds them up, how to support yourself. So really, it's going to kind of be a continuation of this conversation. More love, more support, more I see you and I get you. All right? So please take good care of yourself and be imperfect. And until next week, dear ones, take care. Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm? If not, I would love to be your coach. The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one, and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you're creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations, on-demand yoga classes. We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't. And there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. When you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash Fierce Calm Project.